What's up Outdoorsman, Greg here, and today we're talking all about splicing FIDs. There are a ton of videos out there about how to splice Amsteel, um, Dynalite, Dyneema, whatever you want to call it, Amsteel Blue. There's lots of different stuff for this ultra high molecular weight polyethylene fiber that makes up Amsteel, Amsteel Blue. Dynalite, uh, fire line, lots of fishing lines, etc. All that stuff's made with the same fibers. And there's a lot of videos. As a matter of fact, I have a bunch of videos on my channel about how to splice Amsteel. What nobody ever talks about really are the FIDs. These things, they're very important. And uh, there's a few different things that I want to go over with the in, in regards to FIDs. First of all, this is a very expensive Samson splicing FID. You get a whole bunch of FIDs in here. You get like one, two, three, four, five. You get six or seven FIDs, and then you get a couple of tools with it. I bought this several years ago um, because I spliced. I used to splice a lot. I don't as much anymore, but I spliced a lot, so I went ahead and bought the splicing FID kit. But you don't necessarily need it. It comes with a bunch of these really nice aluminum FIDs. But honestly, I've made a whole bunch of them over the years and uh the ones that i've made are actually i think a little bit better than the ones you get from samson so i'm going to go over these and show you exactly what i like what i use and why it's important first of all these are the fids that you get with the amps uh, with the samson splicing kit it looks like uh, maybe five fids five aluminum fids and you get this pusher to, that helps you uh, splice through fids these are cool because Samson has markings on these that show you exactly um, what length that you need for a berry most of the berries I don't claim to be a professional splicer so you know double check me and fact check me on all this stuff but most splicing guides uh, I know the one from Samson will tell you how many fids you need to bury for the length of the rope, so or, or for the diameter of the rope, rather. So, you know, 7 64th, 8 inch, quarter inch, uh, all the different diameters of rope, they come with a different fid and a different length of berry. So some of them you need to bury a few inches, some of them you need to bury a lot. So do your own homework on, on what you need to do as far as the berry length. But Samson has nice little markings. You probably can't see that, but nice little markings on here that show exactly the length of the fid for the different berries. Now, another one that, that I've made, or another fid that I've made over the years are these needles that you get from Walmart. Here's one that's not been cut. I think this is a sewing needle, but you can see here some that I haven't cut. And then this is one uh, that I did cut and turn into something else. Uh, here's one, like for instance, this one right here. I went in and cut that one with the miter saw and it, they're hollow inside and they work great for splicing. Uh, you can also buy these plastic ones. Uh, I probably bought this on Amazon. It works fine. I've got a bunch of those as well. Uh, these are all the ones that I haven't cut, uh, different sizes for different diameter ropes. These all just came from a kit and I never bought them, so, or never cut them rather, so we don't really need to talk about those. It is much easier to splice large diameter am steel. This is quarter inch diameter am steel and it's much easier to slice this. When you get into the small stuff like your Zingit, your 764th, uh, your, your really, really tiny braided stuff. These little tools are pretty, pretty useful. This is called a, a loop turner, I think, or a loop puller. I will put a link to this in the description below, but it's pretty simple little product. It's made for sewers, and this you can splice really, really well with this on small diameter stuff. This is one that I made out of just some kind of small gauge wire. It's essentially the same thing as this but um, it's got just a little opening here at the end and you essentially you know just run it up through your through your rope and then pull it back through pretty simple same goes with these this is a uh, sewing tool it's the same idea you run this up through your loop push your or through your uh, rope push your tag in through here and then pull it back through there's lots of these different things I've got this one a ton of them however the best out of all of these FIDs, this, the ones that you can make, uh, ones you can buy, and then the kind of the DIY stuff like this, the absolute best one that I've ever seen was invented by my buddy Ernie Power, and he made it from this 
This is like a braided, uh, I think you're supposed to run like automotive wires or electrical wires through this. It's basically like Chinese finger trap material. So whenever you push it, it gets wide. So you can run your tag in through here and it's like a Chinese finger trap. As soon as you pull on it, it squeezes down and constricts and doesn't let it come through. This is the absolute best way to do it. This is the one that Ernie made me. He took some kind of, I don't know if it's a nail or what, but he inserted this, this tubing through there. Look at that. You can, you can run your stuff right through it so easily. It's great. This one works great for really small diameter am steel. I made this one, and the way I did it is I took one of these, one of these Walmart sewing darning needles, right? There's the original, there's the one I made. I cut it in half, I put a nice quarter uh, miter cut on it, sanded everything down, and then I took some of this material and I used a silicone based glue and I basically just gooped the crap out of it and then shoved it down and the, the, the actual this stuff, Chinese finger trap stuff, actually goes all the way down almost to the very beginning or the tip of, of the FID. So that is, there's glue or silicone all through here and it's, it, it's in there pretty good. So it's not just gonna come out under, under normal use. What you don't wanna do is have, you know, grip on this end and then this end and pull because it will eventually come out. But the way you splice, actually works pretty well. So I'm going to give you a, a quick little demo of how this works. And this is the fit everyone should make. I'll put a link to this stuff, this exact stuff in the description below and a link to this fit in the description below, because I'm telling you, I have used every fit on the planet and I have spliced every size am steel you can imagine over the years. And this without a doubt is the best. And it's really really cheap easy to make you guys can do it at home and it's a piece of cake so for a simple little loop i'll show you exactly how this works since this is a uh, hollow braided rope you just you just kind of you just kind of fluff it up you want to go through the center so you run your fid just like that it's going through the center just like that and you can go ahead and pull that through and this is why it's really, really cool, okay? So you just push this back, take your rope, you shove it in there, do a couple of pushes like this. So now that rope is about, I don't know, three inches? Uh, that's about 12 inches, right guys? <laughs> your rope's in there and it doesn't come out easily. You know, if you really yank on it, you, 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 it'll come out, but it's not gonna come through easily, come out easily. And then what you do is just, you just pull it through. Once you're through, then you can pull it off. And now you've got your, your tag end of your rope passed through. And it's so easy. It's so wonderful. You can do the same thing. If I was going to make a locked Brummel, what I would do is I would make my loop here. I would pass this loop back through the tag end. And then I would bury that tag end all the way down through here. All the way down. That is not that easy to do with one of these normal size fids, right? So what you would do typically is you would, you'd fluff this up just like so, you'd get this in here, and then you'd essentially just kind of run it down through the, through the rope all the way down. And it's, it's not that hard to do, but it's just, when you're doing big ropes, you know, you also have to contend with getting the tag end of the rope. You have to get it in here. <laughs> and that is usually a problem. What I used to do is like tape it and that never really works that great. So you can see it's just kind of a problem. So the way you solve that is with this Chinese finger trap material and a smaller diameter fit because it's way easy to just get this one through here. Look at that, it just goes in like butter so I can splice down just forever look at this it's so easy the whole rope okay look at that I got my fit all the way down through there anyway then what you would do is now that your fids out you just pop it out 
or it's or rather that your fit is now that your fit is in the the rope you just pop it out okay so now my fit is completely out I still got my Chinese finger trap here and then what I would need to do if I wanted to bury this down I'm just gonna pull this out just for so I can show you how easy it is okay then if I need to make my berry which your berry is always the hardest part you just run it in and once it's in you just milk it down just like you're just like you're burying a uh, just like you're working your fid through your through your rope see look at there now it's all the way in there and I can come back to this end and I can grab my grab my material and pull it through just like that now I've got it all the way through my end pokes out I've got my loop I've got a full berry and then I just pull it off okay it's awesome then you milk that back down milk that see there here's your tag in here you just milk that back down and you've got a you've done your full berry it is awesome now this one isn't going to stay in there because i didn't do a locked brummel but you get the idea i just wanted to show you what a berry would look like now here's the other cool thing about amsteel this thing isn't even locked but because it it constricts on itself all that's holding this loop in there is the is the constriction of the other ropes and i can pull on this as hard as i want it's not coming out i don't care who you are it ain't coming out but if you loosen it up give yourself some some room you can pull it right out that's the beauty of amsteel anyway this is not meant to be a splicing tutorial what i wanted to do was show you guys this fid Got to give all the props to my buddy Ernie. He's the one that designed this. He created this. He sent me this one, like I said a minute ago. He sent me this, I don't know, a couple years ago for splicing really small am steel, like really tiny am steel. And then all I did was steal his idea and make my own. If you splice am steel or you want to learn, trust me, this is the one you want. I put, I'm going to put the description um, or the, the links to these two things in the description below. And like I said, it's real simple to make. Just cut it a long length of it, glue the crap out of it with silicone or goop or construction adhesive or some other really good adhesive and just shove it down in there. And that's, that's really all you need. And this thing will solve all of your splicing problems. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully you learned something. And uh, you guys get out there and make your own gear. It's a ton of fun. Keeps you engaged in the hunting process year round. So I highly recommend that all hunters go out there and do some DIY stuff. So thanks for watching. Catch you guys on the next one.